Hi, I'm Cody Jensen. Um, I'm honored to be here today with you virtually, thanks to the Spurlock Museum. Um, I'm gonna be playing a bunch of different instruments and styles for you today, um, taking you through my different musical worlds. That first tune was called Pear Tree. Uh, I learned it from a Doc Watson recording. It's an old time Appalachian fiddle tune played on the five string banjo here. Um, and I just really like the melody of that tune a lot, so I decided to use that as a through line uh, for all the different instruments that I'm gonna play today. So you'll be hearing this a lot. Um, and the melody one more time goes like this. So as we go through these different tunes and different instruments, uh, I'm going to exemplify the unique sound of each instrument by playing that melody on there. This is another five string banjo, though much different than the one I just played on Pear Tree. Um, this is what's known as a minstrel style banjo. It has a skin head, it has gut strings. These are actually imitation gut strings, nylon. Um, the neck has no frets and it has friction tuners like you would see on a violin. Um, this is more or less the kind of banjo that you would have seen in the mid 1800s. And the banjo as we know it today uh, really came to life in the United States, uh, but the roots of the banjo are in Africa. So to get an idea of the unique sound of this banjo, I'm gonna play that melody from Pear Tree again. <laughs> play for you now um, is an original tune that I wrote um, and I call it Woolly Mammoth. This next instrument is called a balafone. Uh, it's a West African instrument, uh, a griot instrument, and it is uh, a version of what we think of as a xylophone. So we have wooden keys on top. Underneath we have gourd resonators, and the resonators actually have holes in them that are covered up with a thin tissue paper membrane that uh, 
allow the gourds to buzz when they ring. So it's almost like the effect you have with a kazoo, where you have the little tissue paper membrane um, that makes the buzzing sound when you hum through it. Um, so the piece I'm gonna play for you is an improvisation around a rhythm that I learned while I was studying in Guinea, which is a country in West Africa. The rhythm is called Kasa, and it's a harvest rhythm. So here is an improvisation around Kasa. So here I have a xylophone in front of me now. 
Uh, this is related to the bolophone that you just saw, but this is um, what you would be more familiar with seeing in like a concert band or an orchestra in Western music. Um, it has wooden keys, aluminum or steel resonators, uh, and it's laid out like a piano. So fully chromatic. Uh, the white keys would be down here, the black keys up here, except they're all one color. Um, and the couple major differences in sound that between the xylophone and the bolophone are uh, one being the way that a specific harmonic is tuned into the xylophone notes, um, but more easily heard is the fact that the xylophone doesn't have uh, buzzing that comes from that tissue paper over the chord resonators. So uh, when you strike a key, it doesn't have that buzz with it. So here, here's a, an idea with that melody from Pear Tree again. So the piece that I'm going to play for you on the xylophone is called Log Cabin Blues. Uh, it was composed by George Hamilton Green in 1919. This next setup is more of a collection of instruments rather than just one. Uh, it sort of resembles what we think of as a drum set. So in my right foot I have a snare drum that I've converted into a tiny kick drum. My left foot I have a hi-hat, but it's very low to the ground with tiny cymbals. And then in my hands I have 
what are known as rhythm bones. In my right hand, these are actual bones made from the shins of a cow. In my left hand, these are bones made from boxwood. And here, of course, I have my hanging jug. The jug was an instrument that was popularized in the early 1900s uh, by jug bands, notably in the Louisville and Memphis area. To give you an idea of what the jug sounds like, I'll play that melody from Pear Tree again. So the song I'm going to play for you now is an improvisation around an old folk song known as Reuben's Train.
This instrument is called a steel pan or a steel drum. It was an innovation that came out of the island of Trinidad off the coast of Venezuela uh, just after World War II. They had an abundance of oil barrels that were washing up on shore as a result of the war. And um, so this is actually made out of a 55 gallon oil drum. What they would do is they'd flip it upside down so the bottom is up here and then they heat up the, this part of it and drop a bowling ball on it repeatedly to make a bowl. And then they cut off the unneeded part at the bottom. And then while still hot, they hammer these little bubbles into the bowl from the underside. So what you have is a bunch of little convex bubbles within the whole concave bowl. And each one of the bubbles is its own note. To give you an idea of the sound, I'm gonna play that pear tree melody again. The song that I'm going to perform uh, is an old Caribbean folk song uh, that usually goes by the title Mary Ann. Um, and I'm going to do it in sort of a slower calypso style first, and then I'll bump up the tempo and do it in a soca or soul calypso style. Um, and to, give, to help give it uh, more of the danceable feel that this music usually has, um, I'll be doing all sorts of percussive things. Uh, up here with my hands and I'll also be using a foot trigger uh, that will sound like a kick drum and tambourine, uh, something like that. Okay, so this is Mary Ann.
This instrument probably doesn't need quite as much of an introduction. Uh, I'm sitting here at the piano, and the tune that I'm going to play for you uh, is a folk, uh, traditional folk classic in the American canon. Um, it's called Going Down That Road Feeling Bad, and I first heard it from Woody Guthrie, um, but it's been done by countless people in countless different ways. Uh, I'm going to play it for you as a solo blues piano piece. So here's going down that road feeling bad.
So this last instrument probably is a little less familiar to most. Uh, it's called a harpeggi. And the best way I can explain it is that it's somewhere in the middle between uh, a piano and an electric guitar. So it has strings, uh, like an electric guitar, uh, but it's laid out so that you can, be pl you can tap with both hands. Uh, so more like a piano in that sense. Um, and you just tap where these little boxes are. And like an electric guitar, you can vibrato and slide, which is pretty cool because you can't do that on a piano. Um, so to give you a sense of this sound, I'll play that familiar melody from Pear Tree once again. Appalachian fiddle tune, traditional Appalachian fiddle tune called Angeline the Baker. Um, and I'm going to present the tune uh, more or less as it's known and then I'm going to improvise around that. Um, and then the second tune that I'm going to play uh, is my adaptation of an organ piece by Jimmy Smith called Judo Mambo. And on that second one I'll use more effects. Uh, I'll be using a Leslie speaker simulator um, which is something that you would commonly hear with a, a Hammond organ, um, though it'll sound quite different with that effect on the harpeggi.